the DAR Center is providing a, a place for students uh, to come, particularly students from uh, other areas. When I was here, we uh, had a lot of students from small towns uh, in Wisconsin that may have seen a couple black people in town uh, and probably few uh, homeless people and we would take them out and which they still do to meet and actually talk with homeless people. A beginning stage you might say for people to get acquainted with those who have less than they do. I didn't really know what to expect when I was coming here um, and, and since I've been here I have been kind of plugging it all the time now. I'm like this is a great place you guys have to go here even for if, it, if it's for a retreat. Um, it's more of an experience. It's not just about the service you do, but it's about the community that you build here. Uh, through Loyola, we brought a group of students um, at the beginning of the fall um, so that they could experience um, Chicago in a different way. So these are first year students who are just coming to Chicago maybe for the first time. Um, they're looking to build uh, deeper connections with each other. Um, but then also see a different version of what they're used to on the north side. For a lot of them too, they're not used to being at a shelter, for instance. And so having conversations, even preparing a meal, um, that, that personal contact was really important. We have students, groups that come from the David Dar Center and they work in the Montessori classroom or with the toddlers. And um, we always ask them you know, they have their choice where they would like to do that. We got connected with the DAR Center through a student who had been here with their parish and they came back very enthused about um, the experiences that they'd had and so um, they came to knocking on the door and, and really demanding that we try this at St. Francis and it's been super successful. We've even brought our adults here, our faculty and staff have come here and um, they've all really walked away really understanding more about um, the injustices things that are happening in our world that really puts a face on it for them. Our students have to do 15 hours of service every year and this is a great, uh, great way for them to experience service hands-on and put a face on some of the things they're learning in the classroom. We feel like we, our partnership with the DAR Center has really helped us with our own mission of exposing students uh, to the faces of injustice, to real people in real situations and many of our kids come back and say they had no idea. They had no idea that there were people um, out there that this isn't just a news uh, flash, this isn't just something, a story in a, in a book, but that it's real people with real needs and real feelings. One of the most meaningful experiences over the weekend retreat was our final evening. Um, we were splitting off into groups and some of us were going to help in the um, homeless shelter to serve dinner before the evening came to a close and a couple of us were chosen as um, like a reenacted lottery system for the homeless shelter and I was one of the names chosen that didn't get to spend the evening in the shelter and so as opposed to going and serving dinner um, to the families we immerse ourselves for about an hour um, to see to put yourself in the shoes of a homeless individual of what would you do for that evening if you didn't have a home and it really opened my eyes to how little I do know about their situation and it was really motivating to see that um, there's so many other ways to get to know a situation and you don't really see that until you're put in their shoes. So it's very, very eye opening for me. I am most proud uh, to just have been gifted with an opportunity to be a part of this mission. It's, uh, it's something that makes, I think, a significant difference in the lives of a number of young people. And I think that difference is one that is held on to. Um, and it's, it's a blessing to be a part of. I would say that he was willing to stand up for what he believed in, in spite of the opposition he received. His father 
was in the military. They would have frequent discussions, sometimes heated, on the whole war situation. But later on, when, after David's death and the whole Nixon thing, uh, years took place uh, when Nixon himself uh, was accused of, of many things. Uh, his father said to David's mother, Nixon was wrong and David was right. When you look back to Vietnam, who were the people who basically fought Vietnam? Were, were Latinos and blacks because they didn't go to college, didn't get the deferments that the white students did do. So he, he felt uh, there was a, a, an importance to show that the plight of the poor and blacks and Vietnam and who fights wars for America. Every Catholic warder, you have people who certainly make a bark in the, the community that they live in. And I think that had David lived, would have had a significant impression on the Christian brothers because a lot of young people who are idealistic want to get in involved in communities who really stand for substance. Mm -hmm. and, and if you knew Brother David and Brother Basil, you couldn't find two people with, with greater substance. So I think in a sense now of, the, of, the, of losing a friend, but in terms of the Christian Brothers community, I think that you lost somebody who would have had a, to this day, would have had a great, a powerful influence on young people and say, hey, come join us and maybe there would be more Christian Brothers. <laughs> what really stands out for me uh, regarding Brother David is just his commitment and his, his willingness to put himself on the line, um, to risk his own uh, safety and comfort um, to stand for something greater than himself.